So in lessons six and seven, we learned about how to do a worksheet and the financial statements for the end of the accounting cycle. So in chapter eight, we're going to finish up the accounting cycle. And the in lesson eight one, we're going to learn about what they call closing entries. So first of all, we have two different types of accounts. We have permanent accounts and temporary accounts. Our permanent accounts are those accounts that you carry the balance from one fiscal period to the next. They're going to be our assets, our liabilities, and our capital account. So for instance, if you own a building, an asset, or a computer, or anything like that that you own with your business, if you own it on the last day of December, December 31st of one year, you're going to own that still on January 1 the next year. You don't just get rid of it because the fiscal period ends. So those are called permanent accounts, where those accounts, balances, just carry over from one fiscal period to the next. Then we have some accounts that are temporary accounts that we are going to close them out so that at the beginning of the next fiscal period, they start at a zero. And the reason we do that is because we have some gap rules, the matching expenses with revenue. We want to match the revenue with the expense or what it costs us to make that revenue. And so whenever you start over a new fiscal period, you have to clear those accounts out and make them zero to start that over. So the closing entries are going to be journal entries that we use to prepare those accounts for the next fiscal period. The temporary accounts will be zeroed out basically at the end of each fiscal period. And the accounts that we're going to close out are re revenue, sales, expenses. We're finally going to use this income summary account that we've had on the worksheet and we've been talking about we haven't used yet. We're going to use it now and our drawing account. So who's this guy? Hopefully you know that this is Andy Reid, coach of our Kansas City Chiefs, and Reid spells R-E-I-D. And so we, if you can remember Andy Reid, you can remember what accounts we close out. We close out revenue, expenses, income summary, and drawing. So just a little mnemonic device there to help you remember what accounts we close out. And we're gonna do four a closing entries. So let's talk about income summary for a minute. So income summary is exactly what it sounds like. It's an account that summarizes our income. So on the worksheet and in the income statement, we figured up what our net income for the fiscal period is, basically our profit. And so what our income summary account does is it summarizes our income. So most accounts have a normal credit, a normal balance side, debit or credit. Assets have a normal debit side, liabilities have a normal credit, so forth. Income summary does not have a normal balance side. And that is because it depends on whether we make a profit or lose money. So a net income or a net loss. So when revenue sales is bigger than expenses, we have a net income. And in that case, and you'll see when we do the closing entry here in just a minute, you will have a credit balance in your income summary. And I'll explain a little bit more about that here in just a minute. If your expenses are greater than your revenue and you have a net loss, then your income summary account will have a debit balance. And that'll make sense here again in a minute. So the first one we're going to close out is our sales account, our revenue. Sales has a normal balance on the credit side. And so to make sales show a zero balance, we have to debit it. Well, every transaction has to have a debit and a credit. This is where the income summary account comes in. So if we have to debit sales, then we have to have something to credit, and that's going to be our income summary account. So after you do this transaction and you get this amount from the worksheet, when we do closing entries, it's very similar to adjusting your entries. We don't have a source document. It comes from our worksheet. So, well, actually it comes from our ledgers. But so instead of having a source document here, we're going to center the words closing entries on the line. Typically, closing entries will be on the same journal page as your adjusting entries. So you'll just go down a line from the last line of your adjusting entries. 
you'll center closing entries on the line and then you'll start your closing entries. So in this example, to close sales out, we have to debit it for the amount of the balance, the 5820. Then we're going to credit income summary for that amount. That's our first closing entry. And after that is posted, then your ledger will show a zero balance in your sales account and a credit balance in your income summary account. The second one we're going to do, remember read, our E is going to be our expenses. So all of our expenses have debit balances. This again is our worksheet. To make those show a zero balance, we have to credit it for that amount. So when we do that closing entry, which would come right down over after the next one, our debit is going to be to income summary. Because remember I said income summary summarizes our income. Our revenue, sales went in there. Now our expenses is going in there and the difference of the two is gonna be our net income. So we list income summary first because it's our debit. Then you list all of the expenses and their balances, add them up and the total is the debit to income summary. So you start with your date and your balances. So here's kind of a, a summary after those first two entries. Income summary has a credit of 5820, that's the closing entry for sales, has a debit of 2658, that's the closing entry for expenses. Credit minus debit, we have more credit, leaves us with a credit balance of $3,162, which is the amount of our net income. When this is posted to the ledger, it would look like this. You would not have had anything done to income summary because prior to this income summary had a zero balance. So you do your transaction as a credit to income summary. Then you do your debit, subtract them, and that leaves you with a credit balance in income summary. That's important because now we're gonna close income summary out. If you had had the opposite of this, say this was the expenses amount and this was the sales amount, then you would have a loss and that would be a debit in here. So depending on whether you have an income or a loss, depends on what your balance of your income summary is. Now, income summary, summarize our income. We have a net income of $3,162. That actually technically belongs to the owner. And the account that we have that summarizes the owner's rights to the assets of the business is our capital account. So we are now going to close income summary into capital. So in this example, so if you remember, capital has a normal credit balance because it falls on the right-hand side of the accounting equation. And debit means left, credit means right. So capital has a credit balance. We want to take our net income out of income summary. Remember back here, it has a credit balance. To make income summary be zero, we have to debit it. So we're gonna debit our income summary, credit capital. Basically what you're doing is you're taking the net income and you're putting it into the owner's capital account with that transaction. And then the last transaction we have is to close drawing out. Drawing, if you remember, is when the owner takes money out of the business. So if the owner is taking money out of the business, that's going to eventually decrease the capital account. And so if you remember way back when I introduced drawing, I told you that drawing is a contra account. It contra contradicts the rule of of being on the right side of the accounting equation. Even though drawing is an owner's equity account, which falls on the right-hand side of the accounting equation, drawing decreases capital. So drawing has a normal debit balance. And now we're gonna take that debit balance of drawing and we're going to close it into capital. It, and drawing decreases capital. Capital has a credit balance. So we put it, we're gonna debit capital and credit drawing. That credit to drawing will zero out drawing and it will decrease our capital when it's, once it is posted. You did that same math when you did the statement of owner's equity in chapter seven, where you started with the beginning capital, 
Then you took the net income, subtracted drawing from the net income, and then what was left was added into capital. That's basically these transactions now are taking that information and updating our ledgers so that our actual ledgers will match what we did on our financial statements.